Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Well, welcome to Live Bible Study. My name is Carrie Pickett, and I am so excited that I get to be your host and your teacher today on this broadcast of our Live Bible Study. So welcome for all of you that um, are faithful watchers. You know exactly how we do this, that this is a time that we get to minister the word, but also um, interaction. And so please uh, make sure that you interact. And for those that are new, you're saying, hey, what are you? What does interact mean? Well, um, I'm going to take questions and answers here at the end. And so whatever forum you are watching on, just go down to that chat section and send in those questions. And then and I will take time to um, answer those here at the end. So I love questions. And so um, let's make sure that we have that time together today. And one of the things that makes our, our live Bible study so um, powerful is not only do you get to interact um, with uh, me as the teacher, but also with all of our prayer ministers. And so we have our prayer minister standing by and they would love to be able to pray with you. So the number is there on the screen. So if you're going through anything and say that you need prayer, you need support, um, these prayer ministers love God, they love the word and they are going to speak life over you. So call them. Um, they would love to be able to interact and pray with you today. Also, we have our resources that that's where you can also call in and find out about so many of the resources that we have um, that's going to help you grow in your relationship with God. So Again, live Bible study. This is every day of the week. And so Monday and Fridays, 10 a.m., like we're watching today, and then Tuesday, Thursday nights in the evening, and then early on Wednesday. And so I love live Bible study. I meet so many people from around the nation. And in fact, as Mike and I, my husband, as we travel around to all the Andrew Womack Ministries offices and uh, the Bible schools that we have around the world, I get to meet so many of you that watch Bible study. And so that is always a privilege to be able to meet you as part of our global family as we're all together growing in the Word of God. So um, I'm going to jump right into this message and I'm, I'm super excited about what I'm going to share today. In fact, um, <laughs> I actually shared this message yesterday um, in a way that, uh, you know, was very unique in how I shared it. But yesterday I shared at a chapel, at a Christian school, um, that uh, ages kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. So that's always that's always really fun to teach that broad of a scope. But you know, one of the things that I had shared, and this is what I want to share with you today, is the dynamic of James. And so we're going to talk about James and the mirror of the word. I can't tell you how important not only is the word of God is, and you know this because you are spending time watching a Bible study, praise God. So there's a value you're placing on the word of God, but it's not just, you know, understanding that the word is important, but understanding how you view the word. And when I say that, this is very specific, how you view the word will make or break your faith. And I mean this in the sense of, you know, if you're looking at the Bible as, you know, something you've got to earn, something you've got to maintain, like the promises don't work unless you are perfect. Well, then you've nullified the power of the word because you made it about you. Right. So how you look at the word is really key. So if you are looking in the word in light of you, like these promises only work if I do this and I'm good and I'm right? Then, then those promises are always just at bay to your behavior, right? They're always at a standstill because you haven't reached perfection today. Does that make sense? And so this is super important to realize that that lie of the word only works if I'm perfect. No, praise God. The word is about perfecting. It's about transforming you and I out of carnality, out of the world, out of broken thoughts, right? Out of 
of the flesh, out of sin and darkness. This word is about bringing us out and doing a transformation process. It's not, it's not there sitting on the shelf, you know, all pretty and saying it's only going to work and the power of it and the promises of it, your healing, your prosperity, your peace, your joy, your future only rests on basically you get your act together and then you can access it. No, it's in accessing the word of God that you can get your act together. Right. And so how we view the word right here is really important. Another important concept of how you view the word is that you realize that it's not some historical document, but that it's active and it's real. And so this is when we talk about the word of God being living and active. That's why in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter four, verse 12, it talks about the word of God is living and it's active and it's sharper than a two edged sword. So it's, it, it shows you here that it's not this historical book, it's living and it's active, meaning that it is exactly what you need for today. It's not, it's not like, okay, well, that's what the Christians earlier did. So we got to somehow wrap it around our culture. And therefore our culture is different than their culture. So this part of the word we're going to chuck out and this part of the word we're going to work. No, 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 no. You don't get to chuck out parts of the Bible that you don't like or don't fit our cultural norm. You don't get to do that. No, it's living. It's active. It's a living document of the heart of God. And that's, that's really important. Um, my husband and I got the, the privilege um, this last season and actually uh, wasn't too long ago, probably this, <laughs> just actually this week, um, we got back from Turkey and um, it was one of the few trips internationally that we have done that is, is not about visiting one of our wonderful uh, Andrew Womack Ministries or Karis Bible College locations. But um, we had the privilege of going with Rick Renner uh, and he did a tour of the seven churches of, of uh, Revelation. And we went into, you know, Ephesus and Laodicea and Pergamum and Hierapolis. It was awesome. And um, it was such a privilege um, being able to go with Pastor Rick and Denise. And so um, if you've never heard of them, you'll definitely want to check out Renner Ministries because he's got an incredible Bible teacher. And I learned so much during that time. But one of the things that just impressed upon me and just, I don't know, hit me in a, in a new way was, you know, walking the streets where Paul walked and seeing where Timothy was martyred and seeing where Stephen was murdered and seeing where John was buried. And, you know, these dynamics of the, our, our forefathers of the faith, right? Our brothers and sisters, and just then continuing to hear about the level of, of carnality they were living in and the cultures they were living in. And then when the word of God was delivered to them, when, when Paul's letters came to them, what that actually meant and what it was calling them to, and that it was a living word. It was the spirit of God that was guiding them. And many of them remember they were, they, they, the, they in Ephesus, for example, so many of the Gentiles, right, are coming to us. So they're coming out of real carnality into this whole other lifestyle, this whole other culture of the word of God in relationship with almighty God, not, not one of the thousands of idols that they were surrounded with and all the grotesque things that were attached to that idol worship. But now they were called out, called out ones, chosen ones by God to then live this whole other lifestyle. So the, the word that they got when, when Paul was writing this letter, it wasn't just like, Hey, you know, consider this, see if it fits, if you're comfortable with it, you know, check out what you don't like. If you're comfortable more with some of the old ways. No, it was a whole call to something different. It was living. It was active. This is now this document that's inviting you into relationship and it's calling you out of darkness. And so this word, how you look at this word is really key because it's not, it's not just some like, well, I'll pick and choose what fits my lifestyle or pick and choose what is popular today. I'll pick and choose what's politically correct. Like if, if society says, 
oh, well, you have to accept this. Well, then I have to accept that because society says that's the norm. No, that's not what you do. The Bible is your final authority. So when it says it's living and it's active and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, meaning it has the ability to cut through and it goes on in that verse. It says it's a, it divides. Let's bring that back up. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. It talks about living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. So it's not dull. It's not hacking away at things. It has the ability to really get straight to the point, to the heart of the matter. That's the way God works, right? Sharper than any two edges are piercing to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And why that is so important, that goes back to, and I, and you guys know, Andrew um, teaches this for, for it's, it's one of the key foundational things of this ministry. Uh, Personally, it's probably one of the biggest revelations that I got when I came to Bible school and I came to Karis 25 years ago um, when I learned spirit, soul, and body, right? But as I'm learning spirit, soul, and body, you know, what is the spirit, what is, who I am in the spirit, God himself living inside of me, this renewed, righteous, new creation in Christ. What is the soul? What is my mind? What is my will? What is my emotions? What are the thoughts and dictates and carnalities and thought processes that are in my soul and then my flesh, right? My body. And then all of the things within our body. So for me, the revelation of spirit, soul, and body was massive. It changed. But then most people say, well, that is, is that God? Is that me? Is that the spirit? Is that the flesh? Is that my emotions? The only way that you can know what is truly of God and what's yourself and what's the enemy is the word of God. It has the ability to pierce and divide and bring clarifying lines and not only clarifying lines, this is of the things of God. This is the things of the world. This is who you are in the spirit, but this is who you are in the flesh. Not only does it bring those clarification points, it also brings the invitation for the change. It says, this is where you're held accountable as a believer to live this kind of lifestyle, not live like the world. Don't be taken captive by the thoughts, by the philosophies, by the basic human traditions of this world, Colossians chapter two, verse eight. Don't be, caught, don't be taken captive by those things. So the word of God, it's living, it's active. It has the ability to reveal. So how you look at the word becomes so important. Well, in the scripture that I want to go to today is also how you look at the word as far as in a time frame. And when I say time frame, I want to I want to talk about do you see it as present? You can look at it historically, you can look at it present, or you can look at it as future. You know, if you want to pull a pull a concept from the English grammar, do I see it as future tense? That's a that's future language, right? So how you look at the word of God is key. So let's go to James chapter one. And then, um, and I want to, let's, let's start in 21. Usually when people start talking about this, these verses that actually start in 22, but I want to start in verse 21 is key because here he says this, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. He's saying, listen, there is a way you can lay aside that you and I are called to lay aside all of these things and receive with meekness, receive with humility, right? The implanted word, which is able to save your soul. So this word has the ability, not only does it save you spiritually, meaning it is that you and I becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus, you and I being able to then become righteous, be called sons of God. But so it's the saving of our soul. So that, that dynamic of this new, and we're going to be able to live and walk with the Lord and have a relationship with him eternally, not just here on earth, but eternally forever. But then this aspect is able to save your soul. So that ability, your mind, your will, and your emotions, what the soul is defined at. And so you have an ability to have a redemption of your thought process, lies, dysfunction, trauma, drama, anything that's ever happened to you. The word of God is able to redeem and restore that. That's powerful. And it goes on here in verse 22. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. 
See, you need to realize that this word is not just this routine tradition of just hearing it, nodding it, hallelujah, wave our hanky. Ooh, thank you, pastor, that was good. Leave, and then we don't do anything with it. It is a call to action, right? This isn't just concepts or principles. It's a call to action of those principles. It's a call to action of these standards. It's a call to action, right? God just didn't give you ears to hear, right? He gave you hands and feet and a mouth and a life. And he gave you time, right? He gave you destiny. He gave you gifts. He created you in his image so that you would be what? Not just a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. And then all of the things that he made you fearfully and wonderfully made, as it says in Psalms chapter 132, I think it is. Um, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. So when you look at that, then you're supposed to use all of the things God made you to be to then you're equipped to be a doer of the word. You don't just sit on your couch and whine and complain and say, well, it doesn't work for me. No, get up and move with it, right? So this is key when we look at the word of God. Then it says, if you're just a hearer only, you deceive yourself. Because sometimes you're like, well, I, I believe I do. Oh God, why aren't you doing your thing? And he's like, listen, you're just hearing it. You're not actually making any life change on it. It goes on here to say, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Because this is what happens. Um, you can look in the word of God and if you're not a, a doer of it, there's this mental exercise. How many of you have ever done a Bible reading plan? And you'll do the, your Bible reading plan and it's like um, three chapters of this and four chapters of that. And you'll do this whole thing and check, check, check. And you know, so for all of us list takers, we love checking off our Bible reading plan, don't we? Um, but you can go into the day and totally not remember anything you read. Why? Because if you... If you're not careful, you can allow your interaction, the word to only be a mental exercise, just some religious habit, some religious tradition. But if you're reading the word to say, Lord, how do I do this? How do I apply this? How do I bring this into my family? How do I bring this into my workplace? Lord, how do, right? You're asking questions of the Holy Spirit. Lead me, guide me into truth and understanding right as you go through your day you're saying holy spirit bring this back to my remembrance that is a totally different relationship with the word of god i'm always teaching that to have relationship with god you have to have relationship with the word of god because this is the voice of god the heart of god the call of god to say hey follow me and it's not just in words like follow me by just memorizing scriptures. Yes, Lord, your Bible says this. No, follow me means literally get up and live your life after Christ. So it says that if we're, if we're just hearers and not doers, then it's, it's like looking in a natural mirror. Okay, so ladies, how many times, and this can be for gentlemen too, but how many times do you look in a mirror? We're looking in a mirror to what? Check, fix, alter, <laughs> repair, <laughs> restructure, whatever it is, you're looking in the mirror, but then you'll do it multiple times in a day. I remember, um, I remember I, I'm, I'm a people watcher. And so I remember being in, um, when I lived in St. Petersburg, Russia as a missionary. And I remember, uh, uh, Nevsky Prospect. It's one of the, the large streets there in St. Petersburg and, you know, full of shops and full of these big windows and stuff like that. And just watching people, I'd be sitting there at a cafe, just watching people. And you would see people walk by and they'd be just walking, walking, walking. And then you'd see them, there would be like these, these, this big glass windows and you see them walk, walk, walk. And then you see them look at themselves and they're checking stuff and they're still walking and they would just, and they would just be fixing and then they'd be walking and then you'd watch them kind of get into like a space where there was no, no windows or anything. And then you see them get to the next one and then you stop. They wouldn't, they wouldn't stop, but they would keep walking and you'd see them 
stop though and look at themselves and keep walking. And it was just like this constant. I remember watching these, these girls go do, 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 and they all did it and they didn't even realize they were doing it. Constantly just looking at their image, looking at them and fixing. This is what happens with the word. When you don't do it, you constantly are going back and saying, now, what am I? Now, am I really healed? Now, what does it say? Like you don't get it in your heart. There's not a lasting image. It's something you constantly have to go to. So what does God say? Where is that in the word? I know there's some scripture about something about something, <laughs> right? Being a doer of the word imprints an image of the word of God on your heart. That's why it goes on to say, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and it's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. So it says this, when you look into the perfect law of liberty, so it's talking about this and it's, and it's giving the example of the word is a mirror. And that's why I talked about, you can look at it historically, you can look at it present, or you can look at it just as a future book. It's saying here, this is a mirror. This is a mirror that shows you what? Who you are today. And what I love about it, how it also defines this mirror. It says that it, it is what? You look into the perfect law of liberty. This word is not about condemning you, shaming you, guilting you, right? Making you feel like God can't use you. God doesn't love you. No, this word is a mirror of saying, do you know how much I've done? It's liberty. It says, this is who God is. This is his heart for you. This is how he sent Jesus. This is what Jesus accomplished for you because of that accomplishment. This is what you now possess. Not only now, this is what you possess. This is how to use who you are in the spirit. This is how to walk in your authority and walk in your healing. It's the perfect law of liberty. And that should, just that, if you understood, and you and I understood this book declares your liberty. So that means no matter what situation you're going through right now, you feel bound, you feel frustrated, you feel irritated, you know, you're, you're, you're just enslaved by whether it's depression or fear or condemnation or sickness, you feel enslaved, this word will set you free because it says that it is the law of liberty, meaning law, meaning it is set in stone. This is God's heart and it works. That's why the promises are effectual. That's why they work, right? But if you look at this, instead of looking at it as a, at as a mirror for today, and this is, and you've heard me say this maybe on live Bible study or other teachings, you can have this someday mentality. You take your highlighter, you take your pen, you go to the Bible and you're like, someday. Oh yeah. And we underline, we highlight it. Our hearts are excited. Our spirit's excited in that moment because we're seeing a truth that resonates and there's a desire that gets birthed inside of you. So you pull out that highlighter and it's like, yeah, someday, someday I'll raise the dead and heal the sick and cleanse the lepers. And someday I'm going to go into all the world and preach the gospel. But obviously not today because you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a mess, right? You know, or you go, oh, the scripture's on healing, but well, it's not for today. You know, I, I need to suffer for a while or I need to fix my act or, you know, I need to get cleansed for silver. I need to get my stuff together so then that God can look at me and say, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll heal you. Guys, we have to look at this is the mirror of today. It's not a mirror of, of tomorrow. It's a mirror of today. Okay. So you've, you've heard me refer to this of something my husband uh, uses as an example. He said, he talks about a natural mirror. So in the natural mirror, if you go to the natural mirror and you look in it, who do you see? You see who you are right now in this moment, you know, lifetime, real time, okay? If you were to look into a mirror and that mirror showed you who you were going to be 15 years from now, you looked into that mirror and it showed you what you're gonna look like 40 years from now, 50 years from now. Let me ask you, would you look in that mirror every 10 minutes? Probably not. If, if there was a mirror in my house that every time I walked by it, it showed me what I was gonna look like, you know, 50 years from now, um, I'd probably not own that mirror, right? Ladies, we would not have those mirrors in our house. So I'm going to do something. I can't believe I'm doing this on, on live Bible study, but I'm going to show you guys something. So have you seen the app where it ages you? 
I refused to do it. Like when it was so popular, when it first came out, everybody's like, oh, you want to see what you're going to look like? I was like, no, no. <laughs> I have faith. I'm a fine wine. I get better as I age. <laughs> Amen. Right. I am not. No, I'm not going to do that to myself. But in the in the essence of having an object lesson for these uh, amazing kids I was teaching yesterday, I did it. So I'm going to show it to you. So I'm going to have our television crew put up this horrid photo of me, of what I'm going to look like or what this AI says I'm going to look like when I'm 70. So I'll have them throw that up there. I can't believe I'm showing this. So it's obviously, number one, the first picture of myself is not that good. I was doing it while I was teaching to, you know, 150 kids. But wow, 50 years old. Woohoo! Praise the Lord. Okay, we can take that down now. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so I... I obviously know I'm going to look better at 70 than that. I, I already know that just because I look at the, the genealogy and the, the people in my family and my great grandma and my grandma and wow, no, I'm going to look way better than that. I think it's so funny yesterday. I had a sweet friend of mine. She was meeting with me. She had no idea this happened. And what did she bring me as a gift to our meeting? She brought me this skincare and I was like, very fitting. So thank you. But if you looked at the word, as this someday. It's basically just like that photo that I showed you. Instead of God's promises for me today, I have this like futuristic, like, well, someday, someday when I'm older and wiser and someday when I'm more spiritual and someday when I got my act together and someday when I, then this word's going to work. Can I ask you a question? When is someday? When, what, what's that magical number to wherever, whatever age you are right now, that this works like, okay, in five years and you keep track. And then all of a sudden that one day you open up your Bible and it's like, oh, today is the day. It's been five years. No, if you have a someday mentality about the word of God, a someday mentality will be never a today mentality. The word of God will never be for you today. It's never going to be living and active for today because you're always going to look at it as, as, well, that's for the future. That's God's plan for me later. That's after I do my part or I do blah, blah. No, you've got to look at this word as a mirror of it showing you who you are today. This, you don't look into this like that horrible aging app and look at it and see, this is what I'm going to be someday spiritually. Now, does this prophesy of what you and I can do? Absolutely. I do believe that there are aspects of this that when you read, you're going, yes. And it's a call to growth and it's a call to change and it's a call to movement. And in that, yes, it's calling me into the future. But I have to make that decision. I have to believe it's for, for me today to even step into the process of growth and transformation. And am I going to be stronger spiritually tomorrow and a year from now that I am today? Yes. Why? Because I choose to, because I decided to grow. I've decided to learn it. And what I want to challenge you today is how you view the word of God. You can look at it as religious activity. You can look at it based off. It's on the shelf until you can get your life together. You can look at it as something that, well, you know, it's just a historic book that, you know, is not viable or contextual to culture today. And I'll just take what I need and take what I want. No. Or you can look at it as, well, it's, it's for the future. It's some glorious call to future me. No, this is what Jesus died for you today. I want to give you one last verse, and then I'm going to take some questions here at the end. So in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15, it says this. It says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. And this is where the writer here is talking and talking about the children of Israel and how they hardened their hearts, you know, how God delivered them and then how they, you know, turned away from God and how they believed lies and they hardened their hearts in the wilderness. But he says, today, if you hear his voice, it doesn't say tomorrow when you hear his voice and someday when you get your act together and someday when you no, it says today, if you will hear his voice. And that's exactly what the word of God it is, the heart, it is the voice, it is the love, it is the victory of heaven that is speaking to you today. 
So stop looking at it as some future thing, right? Stop looking and thinking it's some mirror that shows the holy future you. No, it is, it is showing the holy present you. If you've received Christ, then you have been made wonderful, renewed, new creation in Christ Jesus, righteous, beloved, justified before the Lord today. So stop letting yourself see this old <laughs> hag of a woman that I showed you, <laughs> right? Stop looking at it as, you know, well, it's not for me and it's not for today. Don't do that. And so I want to take some questions. Um, now, uh, I'm hosting myself and asking questions, so I'm going to go through these. Um, so I'm going to take a little time here, but um, Peter on YouTube asks this, how do I receive the word today regardless or in spite of everything in my life not lining up? That's an excellent question, and that's exactly what we've been talking about, Peter. And for those of you that look at all kinds of different things that are, are out of whack, maybe you got finances out of whack, maybe you got some relational things out of whack, maybe you've got some temptations and some hidden areas of sin that you're just trying to, to get free from, you're trying to stop doing. This is what happens is if you, if you're waiting, if you think that the word's only gonna work if your life is lined up, then again, you're saying to the word, you don't have power until I get everything lined up. No, the word you got, you are in a perfect state for the word. If your life is not lined up, if you are a wreck, if you are a sinner, you are a perfect candidate for a relationship with the word of God. Why? Because it's in going to the word of God that he, what he shows you how to live. In fact, when it talks about in Psalms, the word of God is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. It's not, you're not supposed to, you are not supposed to line out your life. It is the word that guides you on a path. It's the word of God that brings light to the next step. So if there's things that you're looking at, this is a big old long mess of something. You grab a hold of the word of God. You focus on the word of God and say, Lord, now what do I need to do? So it's not, you're not just a hearer. You're a doer in that moment. So praise God, that should be an encouragement to you that even if everything seems like it is a big royal mess, praise God, because the King of Kings is ready to come in and put things straight, if you allow the word to do that. All right, so uh, Shakia, I hope I pronounced your name right, Shakia, on YouTube asked this. She said, what are the best ways to teach the children youth a message such as this? to help them embrace the word as their mirror. Well, I did this yesterday. Um, and so I did, I had a mirror. I forgot my mirror today, um, but I had a mirror that I had in my Bible. So just to give them a visual picture, you know, that's one of the things that's really key with working with kids. And honestly, not just with kids, with adults. We need, we, there's something like, for example, that horrible picture, you'll always remember that, right? Like, oh my dear Lord, I can't believe she did that. I can't believe I did it either, but you're going to remember it. Why? Because the object lessons or a picture or something that you can show people to make your point helps you be able to teach the word. And so I would just encourage you that um, take key verses. And this is one thing I was teaching with the kids yesterday because they have memory verses that they memorize every single week. It's like, how do you take one thing and start to look at it and look at it and say, I believe this is how, who I am. This is what I'm going to believe um, God sees me as. And so now as I speak this word, I'm speaking it, this is who I am. And I had shared with the kids that I did this actually when I was a missionary in Russia, I took a eyeliner and I wrote um, different confessions on my mirror. So while I was looking at my mirror, getting ready in the morning, you know, um, painting the barn as Andrew Womack would say, <laughs> the mini coats. As I was painting my barn every morning, I would see all these confessions around that was declaring who I was and my identity. So I was, yes, I was looking in a natural mirror, but I was spiritually letting principles and verses and things God had been speaking to me. I was also reviewing this and I was meditating of those within my heart. And so I would just encourage you, those are some practical things you might be able to do with kids to help them remember that. It's not, you know, they're gonna get overwhelmed if they think they have to read all of this or know all of this every time they open it. No, 
teach them how to take a little chunk, teach them how to speak it, and then show them, uh, teach them one practical thing of then how to do it. Okay, so this is the scripture. This is what it says. Now, this is how you do it this week. This is how you do it with your friends or your brother, your sister, towards your mom and dad. Put it in context of their life and their mentalities. So, all right. Um, Denise asked this on YouTube. She says, how do we make sure we don't look at the Bible in a legalistic or religious way? and to continually see it in God's love. I think you just have to make a decision. You have to decide, you know, is this word living and active? Is it God's love? Yes. And there's just some things that you decide, yeah, it's God's love. And so now as I read it, you ask the Holy Spirit as the teacher. This is what I love, is that as a, as a teacher, if you invite him into your Bible reading time. So before I read the word, you know, I'll pray in the spirit. You know, I open it up with an expectation and with an, uh, an already open door within my heart that I'm inviting the Holy Spirit as the teacher. So I don't, I don't tell him like, hey, back off. I got my Bible reading plan to get through today. Like, hey, just don't interrupt me. I am so open to interruptions. I am so open to being taught. And I think that's one of the things that helps you not see it in a legalistic or his just, how did you say, religious or legalistic way. What you do is you're saying, Holy Spirit, show me your heart. And if it starts to go religion and if you start saying, oh, well, yeah, but what about and what you start having all of these, you know, frustrating questions. Well, then I've got to do this and I got to do it. Right. You ask the Holy Spirit, just keep ministering to my heart. Teach me, lead me, guide me. And I would also encourage you, you know, you need to read things in context. Don't just take a verse and take it out and then try to apply it and understand it. You need to read it in its whole concept because there's just nuggets that the Holy Spirit kind of leads to and then bam, right? And you're like, oh my goodness, Holy Spirit, thank you. And so he'll be able to show you that. So invite the Holy Spirit as your teacher and he's always going to show you the word of God through God's love. Amen. Okay, very good questions. <laughs> Vanessa asked this on YouTube. This is a very good question, Vanessa. Thank you for sending this in. It says, how do I fall in love with the word when I don't understand it most of the time while I read it? I don't really understand it and I have to force myself just to read it as though it works. This is, um, this is a, a really good question. And this is where, um, you know, People, if they don't know how to activate the Holy Spirit, they don't know how to listen to the Holy Spirit. They've got a lot of religion. This is where having the word and having a teacher is important. So that's what I would say, Vanessa, even you just being here on live Bible study is so important. Because what we did is we went through, for example, James chapter 1, 21 through 25 there. We went through it and we broke it apart and we shared the concepts of it and we, we brought life into it. We brought some examples into it. We said, you know, how we look at things and there was a challenge, like, how are you going to think of it? Right? So we took those verses and hopefully it was a revelation to you. Hopefully it was like, okay, Lord, now you can start interacting and praying with the Holy Spirit. Say, so where am I just to hear? And where am I deceiving myself in some area where I've been hearing it, nodding my head, ooh, hallelujah, but then not living it, Lord? Now all of a sudden those scriptures come totally alive to you. And you know what? Vanessa, you go back to it and you keep rereading and then you read before it and you read after it and you read before it and you read after it. This is why I love Andrew Womack. I love this ministry because it is a teaching ministry. And so if there's something you're saying, hey, I need to grow in healing, there's, there's topical things that you do and maybe you don't understand verses one through 25, but you get a teaching that says, now let's talk about verse 15 and you go in deep and all of a sudden there's all of this knowledge and revelation. Now, guess what? You learn verse by verse. You learn chapter by chapter. You learn topic by topic. Can I invite you into that versus just a religious activity of, I read, brrr, don't understand, right? 
get some teaching, get a topic, you know, for spirit, soul, and body, because what it's going to do, it's going to take you to multiple verses about who you are in the spirit, and multiple verses about who you are in the flesh. So maybe it's not this succinct line upon line, verse upon verse teaching or reading, I should say, but now you're getting this teaching and it all of a sudden things come together. So the next time you read, you may not understand some things, but then you get to that verse and you're like, I understand what they're saying here. Can I just tell you, that's part of the discipline of now being a believer is that relationship we're learning. We're taking scripture by scripture, truth by truth, concept by concept, truth that reveals a lie. And then we say, I'm not going to believe that lie anymore. So can I just encourage people take the, yes, there is a discipline of reading the word, but read it. But when you hit a verse that you're like, I don't understand this. Well, then go to a commentary and say, what does this verse mean? And just say, I'm having a hard time. What does this verse mean? Dig into the word of God. It's a treasure. And when you start digging in, the Holy Spirit's like, oh, and he starts revealing and he starts showing. So Vanessa, I, number one, thank you for reading the word and believing it works, but get some teachers. Get Andrew, get, come to live Bible study. Um, if you're interested in going line upon line and understanding concepts, we have Karis Bible College. We have online learning. So where you could get courses that you take at home and start going through this, the more you start to let teachers teach you, all of a sudden the word comes alive. And then your everyday reading plan totally changes. Amen? Okay. Um, let's see here. We got another one. Uh, Denise asked this on YouTube. She says, what exactly does it mean to be a doer of the word? Good question. She then goes on to say, does it mean actively being in faith, praying in tongues and envision envisioning the God given vision, or does it actually mean physical work? It is all of it. It is actually, yes, it's actively being in faith. You know what? The word of God says I'm healed by his stripes. I'm healed. So you know what? I'll tell my symptoms, symptoms, I am healed. So it's believing in faith and confessing. So it's yes, faith, but then it's also speaking, being a doer, speaking the word. It says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, right? It, it says, flee youthful lusts. Is that just a concept? No, that actually means get up and leave the movie theater if something ugly is on, right? It means actively get up, take up your cross and follow him. Denying the things of the world, right? Saying no to sin and ungodliness. When the Bible starts talking about, you know, all of the things that are considered the flesh, you know, the sexuality and the temptations and the immorality and the division and the dissensions and all of that carnality, it, it says, what? Get out of the flesh. Set your mind on the things of the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you have opportunity all day long, every single one of us to get in the flesh, to follow the flesh, to watch it, hear it. But there is an activity of, you know what? Hey guys, I, I'm not going to be part of this gossip session. And you turn and you leave. That's part of being a doer of the word, right? Um, you know what? I'm not going to participate in all the stuff, you know, the opportunities that are before me or the frustration and the flesh. You know what? I'm going to stop. I'm not going to yell at my husband or my wife, right? Make that decision. I'm not going to. And you say, you know what? I'm going to go take some time to be with the Lord, right? That is an active part of being a doer of the word. So yes, it's in faith and yes, it's in attitude and yes, it's in um, praying in tongues, right? It's in, it's in praying in tongues, but it's also the aspect of what? It's then doing it. And so I just want to encourage you that, you know, you can ask the Holy Spirit as you're reading something, you ask him, how do I do this? How do I do this? And then look at it in categories. So how do I do this in my thoughts? Because I'll just say, if you can't do it here, you'll never do it here, right? We won't do it with our life if we're not doing it with our mind. You don't go anywhere physically that you haven't already gone mentally. So you make a determination of where you're going to go with what the word of God is saying. Okay, so how do I do this with my spouse? How do I do this towards my children? Lord, how does this work in the workplace? Show me how to do this. Ask the Holy Spirit questions. And then you'll start to see pictures in your heart and your mind. And then you ask the Holy Spirit in the moments when you're with your spouse or when you're with at work, right? 
Holy Spirit, bring it back to my remembrance. See, when you put the Word of God inside of you, then the Holy Spirit has the ability to bring it back up. And all of a sudden it becomes alive in real time in a moment. So then when you're getting ready to spew and rah, to your spouse, all of a sudden the verse that you read and you ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to do it with your spouse, all of a sudden it comes back to your remembrance and it makes you stop and go, okay, so how do I apply that right now? Because the Holy Spirit at that moment is calling you to walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. All right, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do one more. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Uh, Peter asked this, he says, how do you practically use the word effectively against the enemy's attack? Do you keep speaking the word despite the situation, even when the situation does not respond to our declaration of the word? Yes, you still speak the word. It's a sword, it's living, it's active, it has the ability to pierce, but what is it doing? It's piercing a lot of things that the enemy's attacking you on, but sometimes the thing that is important, and I've seen this within my life, I have to keep speaking the word of God, why? because I am killing my own unbelief. I'm killing my own doubt. I'm killing my own fears of all those things the enemy's trying to throw. I'm saying, no, in the name of Jesus, I speak this over. No body, you are healed. And as I'm speaking the word of God, you know, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes, that's listening to teachers. That's, that's listening to Bible study. Yes, that's listening to worship. But also I have found for my own life, one of the ways I've seen major breakthrough is when I speak the word and my faith, as I hear the word come out of my mouth, it stirs up my own faith and authority over the enemy. So I just wanna invite you into that. And guys, can you call us today here at Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College? The number of our prayer line is on the screen. Ask about the resources that Andrew has specifically on how to study the Word of God. One of the things Andrew also has, he has a living commentary where you, we have an app, we have a daily, guys, we have a daily Bible reading plan that Andrew's put together. So daily Bible reading. But then if you don't understand a verse, you know what you do? You click on it and it takes you to his commentary right there on your phone. And then you can see from a teacher explaining what that verse means. Check out our Bible reading app today. Call our prayer line, ask them about the resources we have on how to understand and walk in a relationship with the Word of God. I hope this was a blessing to you today. I hope that you did not snap a photo of my ugly age photo to show the world. We'll just leave this between you and I, okay? So God bless you. I love you guys. Thank you for taking time to put the Word of God within your life. God bless you and I'll see you next time. Deuteronomy 8.18 says that the Lord gives us power to get wealth so that we can establish His covenant. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28, it says that the reason we work with our hands is so that we can have to give to other people. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 says, God is able to make all grace abound towards us so that we can always have all sufficiency in all things and abound unto every good work. So those verses and many others talk about that the reason God blesses us is so that we can be a blessing. And I just want to ask those of you who God has blessed and that you have seen His supply in your life, I'd like to ask you to help me to build out our Karis Bible College campus. We're in the process of trying to expand. We had over 600 people that registered this last year and didn't show up because they couldn't find housing. So we are in the process of building student housing and then we're gonna to have to also have a place where we can feed them. We're gonna need additional classroom space to increase and accommodate all the people. And so if you go to awmi.net slash campus, you'll find an artist rendering of what our buildings are gonna look like and you can go inside and look around and uh, it would be a real encouragement to you. We've got a big vision, but I believe that God is supplying it and he does it through people. The reason he blesses us is so that we can be a blessing. So go to awmi.net slash campus to check out what the campus is gonna look like. And there's a place there that you can become a foundation builder with us and help us to accommodate all of these people who are wanting to come and learn the word of God. That's awmi.net slash campus and become a foundation builder today. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 